If you've been diagnosed with 3PD and looking for treatment approaches, you may have heard of my treatment approach and others out there called habituation. In today's video, I'm going to give you a specific example of a particular issue complaint trigger and how you can use habituation to desensitize and get rid of dizziness using that habituation. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Amy McMillan. I'm a mobile vestibular therapist in Northeast Ohio, and I'm here to bring you strategies, tips, and tricks to treat your dizziness at home. So let's go over what habituation is as a reminder. So habituation is the practice of picking a trigger that normally gives you dizziness, and in a controlled, safe manner, slowly increasing your exposure to that stimulus until your brain desensitizes and no longer feels dizzy from experiencing that trigger. So over time, if we keep doing that same particular individual task, your brain will start to desensitize, tamp down, and not ring that alarm saying, I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna do this, this makes me uncomfortable. I'm going to give you dizziness so you don't push so hard, so you don't trigger my dizziness. However, it's a vicious cycle. If you don't use it, you lose it. If you stop pulling back from everything that triggers you, there's not a lot that your body can tolerate. So with habituation, we use very controlled, particular, task-specific things to get you back in control of your body again without triggering symptoms. So let's talk about a specific example that a patient shared with me recently. They said, Amy, I feel dizzy whenever I bend over to shave my legs. I just feel unsteady and I start to feel disoriented and I, I cannot do that. Can I habituate? Can I get used to dizziness? We made sure to figure out that there was no other reason that the client was having dizziness bending over uh, to shave the legs. So no BPPV, no crystals in the ear, no cervical or neck misalignment that could be causing dizziness um, if the neck was kind of protruding or torqued in a wrong way. So when they stood up, it would go away. So we knew it had to be something that the brain just didn't like that movement for their particular condition. So what we started with is focusing on grounding during that specific test. So grounding is the conscious effort of picking your touch system, so your hands, feet, core, so your body control, over any false sense of movement that the brain is perceiving. You do that habituation exercise, which we're gonna demo in a second. I prefer to have patients do reps of anywhere from three to five with eyes open while grounding during the entire task, and then try three to five reps with the eyes closed. So let me show you what something like that would look like for habituation. So here I have a chair. I'm going to put my leg up on the chair. I'm probably going to hold for safety. I'm going to hold, put a leg up on the chair. So first I have my touch points. I have my foot on the chair. I have my hand on another hand on the hip, but I could in fact grab another chair if I felt unsteady. So now what I'm going to do is start bending over with my eyes open and get used to that sensation. So bend over, feel if I'm steady, and I am because I'm touching, maybe I have another chair, and I just get used to that motion. And if I do five without dizziness, I'm going to try eyes closed then. Okay, so I felt safe and controlled in that exercise. So now I'm gonna take one hand away. If I do the eyes open times five, eyes closed times five, I feel like I'm in control. I'm going to take the other hand away and practice that same maneuver. So eyes open, I bend over, I come up. I bend over, make sure I feel steady, I feel grounded, I have control. I wait, I kind of pause and let my brain say, Am I moving or do my feet feel steady? Or if I am moving, acknowledge that. Does your foot sway side to side, but do you feel like you have control? I come back up, 
I let my brain know I stop moving, I'm grounding with this exercise, and then I repeat. And basically, you're exposing yourself to a stimuli in a controlled manner until you feel so comfortable with it that you don't have that dizziness trigger. And then I would repeat eyes closed, really just to decrease any visual dependence and improve my grounding as much as tolerable. Anything with eyes closed is going to be more challenging, so just word of caution, be super safe and try to hold or keep your hand close to a chair if you need. So you want your hand hovering, ready to catch if necessary. So we're gonna stand tall, close our eyes, have my hand ready, bend forward, hold my steadiness, back up. I'm gonna hold here, I feel like I'm steady, so I will go down, hold my balance, come back up. And repeat that up to five reps. So if you can understand the concept of habituation, basically it is the desensitization or exposure to something that makes you feel dizzy when there's no other cause as to why you should be dizzy. So visually induced dizziness, going through a Costco, um, taking dishes out of the dishwasher, turning, anything that shouldn't be causing dizziness and you ruled uh, BPPV or anything like that out and the tests are coming back normal, you should probably be using habituation exercises, which is one of my key components to treating 3PD. And just kind of a rule of thumb, my prescription is to pick a task that bothers you, repeat with eyes open for three to five reps, then repeat very cautiously and controlled three to five reps with eyes closed at your pace, at your comfort level. Let me give you a couple more examples of things that clients have told me that cause dizziness that we were able to habituate to. Sitting in traffic at a red light and traffic goes past you, makes you dizzy. It shouldn't, it's visually induced. You're sitting, your brain is perceiving that visual input over your somatosensory or touch input causing this disorientation, giving you dizziness. Standing at the top of stairs, not even going down the stairs, just standing and looking down. Your brain chose the visual system, makes you feel like you're tipping downwards. If you were to choose your touch system, hold on to the railing, focus on your feet, looking down those stairs should not cause dizziness. So we habituate to that. Going to a Costco or a grocery store, big open spaces make you feel disoriented. So what do you do? You use the shopping cart and you try to ground and focus on your feet and the cart as you walk through the grocery store. I had another client who freezes in wide open spaces like parking lots. If they stand close to a curb or close to the side of the road or close to some cars, they can walk. But if they're out in open space, their body freezes. So what do we do? We started habituating, going from the side of the road by the berm with a cane. And then with a cane, we took a foot towards the middle of the road, felt comfortable, built up tolerance. Then we took another foot towards the middle of the road. Still with the cane, those touch points started walking in the middle of the road until she proved to herself that no matter if she's walking to the side or berm of the road, a foot from the road or the middle of the road, all of the same things were experienced by her somatosensory, her touch system. So she should be able to walk the side, the middle, anywhere on that road without causing dizziness. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about the principle of habituation. If you can understand that, you can take any trigger that causes your dizziness and slowly and carefully expose yourself to that stimuli until your brain desensitizes and you can combat that dizziness. So if you have any questions or specific things that you need help tackling, throw them in the comments below. You know I'll answer and I will do my best uh, to give you uh, advice as I can. Until I see you next week, stay healthy, stay steady, stay strong.